Hey, hey everybody. Today we're going to take a look at price elasticity of supply, but more specifically, the determinants of it. Let's start off with just a definition again. The price elasticity of supply is a measure of how much the supply of a product changes when there is a change in the price of the product. And we calculate that by a percentage change in the quantity supplied of a, of a particular product, say X, over a percentage change in the price. And that can be shortened to this uh, formula, percentage change in the quantity supplied of X over percentage change in the price of X. And remember, since there's a direct relationship between price and quantity supply, quantity supplied, pass will always be a positive number. So let's take a look at the determinants. There are three main determinants, and one of those determinants has two subcategories. The first is how much costs rise as output increases, and that will change the 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 elasticity of supply and there are two subcategories the existence of unused capacity and the mobility of the factors of production the second major determinant of pests is the time period considered and the third is the ability to store stock okay so let's look at each one of those in a more in-depth manner how much costs rise as an output is increased what does that mean? Well, if the total cost rise significantly as a producer attempts to increase some supply, then it's likely that the producer will not raise the supply, and so the elasticity of supply for the product will be relatively inelastic. And this happens for two reasons. Okay, number one, the, the, the existence of unused capacity. If there is unused capacity, in other words, in other words, there is um, uh stored products right there's there's oh i know a, a perfect example is like if you had a co if you had a a pizza um restaurant pizza hut had a restaurant and they made um they made they built they originally bought two ovens but they found out that throughout their their sales that they really only need to use one oven so they have an entire oven and they usually serve say a hundred patrons a night but then all of a sudden um, for whatever reason, they have an advertising campaign and Pizza Hut, they put things on sale. All of a sudden, there's, there are 200 people that show up every night at Pizza Hut. Well, if they already have that oven in place, which they purchased before, they can quickly fire it up right, and create more pizzas to meet the, meet the demand. And so if there's unused capacity and extra factory in, in, in schools, we often talk about like if there were a whole building in your school that weren't being used, that all of a sudden there was an increase in students, they could, you could quickly increase the supply of of education being provided to students by using that, that, that building. So that's the first thing. So if there is unused capacity, the price elasticity of supply will be relatively elastic. In other words, you can do it really quickly, right? You can just fire up that other oven. But if a firm is producing at capacity, if they're already using those two ovens, ooh, if there's another 100 people that show up and now there's a demand of 300, or the price goes up to 300, they, they'd have to buy a new oven. Maybe it wouldn't fit. They'd have to rent a new place and Pizza Hut's price elasticity supply, if they're producing at capacity already, be relatively inelastic. The mobility of the factors of production is another thing that affects costs. If the factors of production are easily moved from one productive use to another, then pests will be relatively elastic. And if not, pests will be um, relatively inelastic. And an example of this would be if a company were maybe manufacturing one liter plastic bottles and then all of a sudden the price of two liter plastic bottles goes up, then it would be relatively easy for that company to produce um, the larger plastic bottles. The reason it would be easy is because of relatively small costs. Okay, so how much the cost rises, output increases, impacts the elasticity of supply for a particular good. The second major one is more time is the time period considered, and just very basically, the more time, the longer the time period, more time equals more elastic. So in general terms, the longer the time period considered, the more elastic the supply will be. What does that mean? Well, in the immediate time period, which usually means now or up to a month, maybe, firms are not really able to increase their supply very much, if at all, if prices change. So therefore, the value of pests would be relatively inelastic. In the short run, maybe in six, eight months, may, the, the firms may be able to increase the quantity of some factors of production that they employ, like maybe hiring more workers uh, or, such a, or, or raw materials, but they may not be able to increase all of their factors. So they could hire more people and cram them into a factory, 
but they couldn't really necessarily create a new factory in the short run. However, in the long run, firms may be able to increase the quantity of all factors of production they employ, and so the value of pests will be much more elastic. And this is logical. Over the long term, a, a firm could be able to create an entirely new factory and be able to produce more if the price of their product goes up. And the last determinant of price elasticity of demand, uh, not of demand, the price elasticity of supply, is the ability to store stock. And so I made up this word, it's not a real word. The more stockable a good is, the more elastic it is. And that means that if a firm is able to store high levels of a stock or have high inventories of their product, then they'll be able to react quickly to price increases uh, with swift supply increases so that pests will be relatively elastic. So think about these three determinants of price elasticity of supply. I think they're pretty logical. The difficult thing with all things in supply is you have to flip your brain around from demand. Demand, for some reason, makes more sense. Well, mainly because we spend our lives consuming things. We're demanders. But when you think about it as suppliers, if price goes up, how quickly can I respond to that? And the more quickly you can respond, the more elastic it'll be. And so that makes sense. If you already have a bunch of stuff stored, you can quickly put them on the shelves and take advantage of the high price. If you have to manufacture them, ah, that's difficult. Or if you have to plant, you know, corn, the price of corn goes up, but you got to wait nine months to, to increase the supply. Well, obviously, it's fairly inelastic. But over a longer time period, the more ability to, to, to store um, particular products... The, 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 the lower the cost is for you to actually shift and produce more pizzas, as I was talking about, that oven that was already in place, all of those things are going to be able to affect, are going to affect greatly the ability, the elasticity, the flexibility of a firm to respond to a change in price. Okay, I hope you found this video to be helpful, and I'll talk to you in a bit.